When you look at the modern landscape of underground hip-hop, the resurrection of reality-based lyricism and simple head-knocking beats has become the main sound that people are gravitating to. Credit is usually given to East Coast visionaries like Westside Gun and Rock Marciano for restoring this sound, but at West, one MC deserves just as much credit for paving the way for this modern age of hip-hop, and his name is Planet Asia. Over the past 25 years, Planet Asia has had his nose to the grindstone, pumping out dozens of mixtapes and albums that define what it means to be a true MC. Through his group work with Durag Dynasty and Gold Chain Music, and also through his solo work, Planet Asia has been untouchable during this time frame, and he is the godfather of this sound over on the west coast. Born and raised in Fresno, Jason Green is California to his core. He fell in love with hip-hop at an early age, as the culture made its way through the west coast, and he started rapping as a teenager. His first rap name was Asiatic J, and then Asiatic X, and after being inspired by Wu-Tang and wanting a superhero name for himself, he settled on Planet Asia. Due to the culture of where he grew up, Asia was forced to grow up fast, and says that he was drinking in clubs by the time he was 10 or 11 years old. This translated to his rapping ability, having skills years beyond his age from the jump, by the time he was 15, he was in the rap group's Third Element and Nubian X, and he got the opportunity to perform at a show that Gangstar was rocking, and DJ Premier gave him props on his skills as an MC. To Young Planet Asia, this meant the world, and he would take that confidence with him as he began to take his music career more serious. He moved to the San Francisco Bay Area in 1998, and the following year went on his first tour opening for the Jungle Brothers, and at this point he had fully introduced himself into the underground hip-hop scene. He joined the group Schoolyard, also known as Yard Massive, and released a couple of EPs, but his first real entry onto the scene was 1998's Planet Asia EP. This is straight up one of the best EPs of the 90s. The producer Fanatic lays these low-end, head-knocking beats, and Asia comes out of the gate with his own signature blend of knowledge crossed with street sensibility. This EP ended up getting distributed by Fat Beats, but they weren't interested in it at first. They took a look at its cover and thought that it would be too abstract for their liking. He used his own money to press up vinyl and sell the album until Fat Beats was forced to pay attention and jump on board. Him pressing up his own vinyl like this is pretty common now, but back then it was pretty groundbreaking. Planet Asia was not the first artist to do this, but while most artists were waiting for labels to pluck them from the crowd, this new burgeoning underground scene was finding ways to do it on their own, and they set the tone for the underground artists of today in that regard. In 1999, he was featured on Peanut Butter Wolf's album My Vinyl Weighs a Ton. It was his first major placement, and got him some notoriety across the nation. Around this time, he teamed up with Rasco to form the group Cali Agents. In 2000, the duo released the album How the West Was Won. This album signified Planet Asia as one of the leaders of the new vanguard of West Coast hip hop, and the album did very well, even being named the Independent Album of the Year by The Source. Planet Asia was signed to Interscope Records off of the success of How the West Was Won, and it started a new era of his career. At this point, Planet Asia had a major label deal and an independent deal at the same time, so he was able to navigate both worlds of hip hop simultaneously. He only was on Interscope for a couple years, and never released an album under them, but he did get nominated for a Grammy in 2002 for his work on the song W by Mystic. The first solo Planet Asia LP was 2002's Still in Training, and don't let the title fool you, Planet Asia was a fully formed MC by this point. He often gets lumped in with the conscious MCs and backpackers, and while he has been known to drop knowledge with his raps, his music is always made with a hardness that separates him from what most artists in those lanes are capable of. Planet Asia has described his style as a blend between LL Cool J, Rakim, and Too Short, and you can hear all that within his sound. With the supreme knowledge and intricate rhyme patterns of Rakim, the songwriting mastery of LL Cool J, and the Bay Area stank and attitude that you get from Too Short, all combined to make this incredibly unique MC. In 2003, Asia signed with Avatar Records, and released his next record grand opening, earning him yet another Independent Album of the Year award from the source. After parting ways with Avatar, Plan Asia decided to take his career into his own hands, and start his own label, called Gold Chain Music. Planet Asia is one of the hardest working MCs in hip hop. It's almost impossible to keep track of all of his mixtapes and albums that he releases because there's so much volume, but even with that high quantity of music, the quality never suffers. 
Nowadays, underground artists are pretty much expected to drop a few projects a year to stay relevant. Well, Planet Asia was doing this back when most people were on a two-year album cycle. In the mid-2000s, he released two more Cali Agents albums, the mixtapes Throwback, the Steady Gang Mix, the Jewelry Box Sessions, the Sickness, and the Medicine. And within that group of albums, he was rapping over production from Mad Lib, The Alchemist, Evidence, and so many of the most talented producers around. Around this time, Asia was a member of the group Strong Arm Steady. I'm not positive when his tenure with the group started and finished, but his work on the album In Search of Stoney Jackson, over top of Mad Lib production, is proof that he can rock a Mad Lib beat like no other. The two share a funk-driven dynamic, blending classic hip-hop with a sonic territory that only they could meet at. Asia released the immaculate EP, Cracks in the Vinyl, in 2011, over top of some Mad Lib beats, and he's also been teasing a full-length record between the two for the past year, so hopefully we'll see that soon. Planet Asia released the Jewelry Box Sessions album in 2007, and a pair of albums in 2008, which set the tone for his incredible run of the 2010s. Planet Asia released just under 40 projects last decade alone, and through it all he maintained a level of consistency that most artists struggle to keep up by the time they get to album number 5. Each of his releases stays so true to who he has always been at his core, while working with new producers on each one to help bring out a slightly different edge to his sound every time. This way of maneuvering is now the norm throughout the underground. Each of the top MCs release a handful of projects every year, cycling through each of the top producers to bless a whole album each time, and Planet Asia has been setting the tone for this for years. Take a look at DJ Muggs, who has now made albums with Makami, Al Davino, Crime Apple, The God Fahim, Mayhem Loren, Rome Streets, Rock Marciano, and many more. His album Pain Language with Planet Asia was his very first collaborative album with an MC like this. Planet Asia literally paved the way for how the underground would be moving for the next 15 years. Planet Asia's discography is worth a full complete steep dive, but I don't really have time to get into each and every one of them, so let me highlight a few of the essentials for you. Two of Asia's frequent collaborators throughout his career have been Killer Ben and Tri-State. He and Tri-State formed the duo General Monks, and all three of them are members of Asia's supergroup Gold Chain Military. In 2013, the trio formed the group Durag Dynasty, and with production from The Alchemist, they released the album 360 Waves. Simply put, this is one of the best albums of Planet Asia's career. With The Alchemist as their Pat Riley, the group channeled the Showtime Lakers as some of the most electrifying players that California has ever seen. The trio had plans of releasing a follow-up record in 2014 called Extended Capes, Episode 1, but that never came to fruition. But don't worry, because now into his third decade rapping, Planet Asia was just entering his prime and wasn't slowing down anytime soon. The next classic in PA's discography is Anchovies, his album with Apollo Brown from 2017. The album has a stank to it like the album's title suggests. Asia has great chemistry with all of his producers, but he and Apollo Brown reach a height together that few others are able to achieve. The beats bring the same attitude that Asia always brings every time he's on the mic, and the album just has this old school cool feel to it, while being something completely new. Planet Asia's aesthetic is a cross between the realness of a lifelong gangster with the high art that his work compares to. He has been a 5%er since the 90s, and his beliefs and ideology runs deep within all of his lyrics. While also never feeling preachy, the knowledge in his rap is so much more than a topic of thought. It's woven through his reality, so he has no choice but to recite it. Asia followed up anchovies with The Golden Buddha in 2018. On the opening track Magnetic Lord, he raps, I don't chase trends, I always keep it Asia, cause bubblegum always loses its flavor. This is the official Planet Asia motto. Throughout his entire career, he has done nothing but stay true to his real, authentic self, and he has set the tone for a culture-wide resurrection of realness to follow in his footsteps. In 2019, he released the project Initials on My Jewelry. This is technically a compilation of some unreleased tracks, so it may not be an essential listen for most, but I did want to shout it out because it has my personal favorite collection of his songs. With this grand and soulful sound to it, the project perfectly caps off the decade for him. Even after all of these years, Planet Asia has shown no signs of slowing up. He's already released 20 albums in the 2020s, and we're only 4 years in. People always make a point of saying that rap is a young man's game, but Planet Asia proves that that is not the case. Planet Asia won't lose a step as he gets older, because his sound is built on his realness and authenticity. As he ages, Planet Asia will always continue to get better, because he always will be Planet Asia. Look around at your favorite rappers right now, and they all owe a bit of their sound and their strategy to the one and only Gold Chain Godfather, 
Planet Asia. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Planet Asia is one of the most underrated MCs of all time, and he's one of my personal favorites, so I really had a good time making this video. Drop your favorite Planet Asia song and album down in the comments. Also, let me know what other artists you want to see me cover this year in 2024. I'd like to give a special shout out to my patrons. I've been doing the Patreon for a year, so if you join now, you get a whole year's worth of playlists and behind the scenes updates on everything. I also started up a monthly podcast on my Patreon where I go over everything I listen to each and every month and give my thoughts on it. I recently just dropped a podcast episode going over my 50 favorite albums of 2023. And along with that, I also released a playlist ranking my top 230 favorite songs of 2023. So if you're interested in supporting the channel and want to get some bonus content in the process, head over to patreon.com slash defgoldbloom. Anyways, I got a ton of great stuff planned for you guys this year. So make sure that you stay tuned, stay safe, and stay deaf. Thanks for watching.